Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Rex, I'm Daniel. He's left through Whiskey Spell It. He's some dude in a whiskey shirt. Yeah, it's a good shirt. <laughs> that I can't tell you where to buy. Yeah, because <laughs> I really can't. <laughs> so here's the thing, because tomorrow is donation day. Yeah. And the beginning of dry week. Yeah. Dry week starts tomorrow at noon. Yes. And runs until the following Friday at noon. So the 29th noon Friday is April to the 5th, 5th. noon yeah. Friday. And then we're going to be doing whiskey stuff right up I to mean, the noon. I mean, right after right the noon. <laughs> we've got video shoots and that's, that's ridiculous. We, we looked at the calendars like the only way it's even a little bit possible. Is if we move it noon yeah. to noon. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I was going to say. We're going to end the official history timeline with Japanese whiskey. Yeah. And what's weird is... Technically, I could have started with Japanese whiskey back in the 1900s, which would have put it farther earlier in the timeline. Okay. But I'm choosing to bring Japanese whiskey in at the point at which the rest of the world discovers that Japanese whiskey is important. Yeah, within the last few years, this has not only gained momentum. I'd say the last four years. Not only gained momentum, it has become, like, uh, uh, real big. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that they just announced... A massive whiskey shortage in Japan, yeah. and both of these distilleries are discontinuing like a half dozen brands each yeah. for the foreseeable future. Right. And everyone's freaking out. Now, just keep in mind, it's only going to take about another six to eight years, and, so many and it'll years. all be back. So right? Many years. So if you can hang on for six to eight years, you got to ration out your Japanese whiskey. Yeah, their just stock will catch up. High droppers. Look, no, here's like by the time Japanese whiskey becomes easily available again, yeah. my son will gra be graduating high school, my oldest, right. and on that day we can celebrate with a newly available Yamazaki. Now here's why. <laughs> here's why I think hard for parents at eighteen. <laughs> so many people are concerned about the situation. Yeah, is because there's so few laws and regulations about Japanese whiskey in Japan, and it's so popular. I would be willing that to bet. It, it seems like, man, this is ripe for the market to be flooded with subpar whiskey coming out of Japan. I totally agree. Just like, because they can slap a label on and it. And it is going to happen. Uh, but I also think that the I think that it will lead to actual laws and restrictions helping to guide the future of Japanese whiskey industry. Well, hopefully, hopefully they're good laws. We have, you just need guidelines to make sure that whenever you look at a bottle, you know what you're getting. The more like Everything beyond that is like, no, just, just sit yeah. down. Sit down, lawmakers. Unless you have a Glen Cairn in your hand, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. More like guidelines, actual rules. <laughs> more like guidelines, really. <laughs> We're going to start with Yamazaki 12. We've said it before, but it's worth saying again. If you're into scotch... Uh, not necessarily Isla, but if you're into um, islands and space sides and you know something with a bit more character, a slightly different angle of approach, mm -hmm. there's a lot to like about Japanese whiskey. So here's the story. Are you ready? Yeah. It's a good story. Yeah, not yeah. just facts. It's a good story. Yeah. That's, we'll talk about that, the whiskey in a that second. That thing you said with story. Shinjiro Tori is in Japan, and he's a merchant. Think of him as the Johnny Walker of Japan. He's a merchant who starts bringing in outside alcohol from other countries mm -hmm. and uh, blending it or releasing it as separate brands and things like this. And he does this successfully for a while. Releases wine, releases uh, Western liquor, even connects to a Portuguese wine merchant. Yeah. Right? And this is in the 19, early 1900s. We really and want then, to talk about the whiskey. And then he decides, and here's what he, we're talking about in just a second. Then he decides, I want to make an actual Japanese whiskey. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so he calls... He convinces the executives to do it. They all think it's a bad idea because they're like, why Why actually make things when we can just source and right. get money? Yeah. <laughs> he convinces them, no, we should try to make our own stuff yeah. so we can make an actual Japanese whiskey. And for the task, he taps Masataka Takatsuru, mm -hmm. who has recently returned to Japan from Scotland yeah. by way of the U.S. And... Masataka becomes the master distiller. Right. And that's the origins of the Yamazaki distillery and the Suntory brand for a good time. So, make it a Sun Suntory time. time. <laughs> so, the whiskey. It's from the movie Lost in Translation. Yes. It's an amazing movie. It's the Scarbros, the Scarjos. It's the Scarjos breakout performance. <laughs> Opposite Bill Murray. Scarjo. Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal. All right. So, so, what you're saying is this guy. Everybody's like, let's just make the money, dude. Why, why, why are you making stuff? And it wasn't for him wanting to establish 
Real Japanese, Japanese whiskey, whiskey as a thing, we would not, you would not have an entirely new category that is celebrated, yes. that, is, that is admired. It's that guy. And typically, the stereotype of Japanese taking on commerce is they take what other countries do and then turn it into an art form. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's like, oh, you make a good burger? Or oh, we're going to have people who will spend their entire lives perfecting the burger. Right? <laughs> right? Oh, you want to do sushi? We'll have a guy who has a subway shop with five stools devote his entire life yeah. to making the best sushi ever made on the whole history of the world. Jiro G yeah. dreams of sushi. Yeah, Jiro dreams of yeah. sushi. Yeah. And so, so this is, right, They when you turn that attention to whiskey, of course you're going to get an amazing product. Of course you are, right? And it's not that there's not people in brands in Japan looking to cash in. It's just that that's the more, that's the, the heralded culture of Japan is sacred writing. Everything is an art form. Okay, now we're talking about the whiskey. I, it, there has to be peat in this. No, there has to be. Well, if there is, it's blended in at such a small quantity that it, to me it represents more of a wood spice than a peat note. Oh, dude, there is this amazing earthiness yeah that I don't know how they could have possibly achieved that without some kind of peat. now they're doing Irish style distilling and blending mm -hmm. which is that because there was only a few distilleries that they could pull products from yeah if you wanted to create variety you uh -huh. had to do the variety yourself yeah right yeah so in Scotland you can pull from all these different distilleries doing different things. In Japan, they only worked with their own companies and so it's like, well if we want to do a blend of grain and malt, we have to make both grain and malt. Right. And so what happened with the Japanese distilleries is they opened multiple distilleries, mm -hmm. focused on different products, and then they blended within their company profile to release products. And that's when you get things like Hibiki right. Harmony and Hibiki 12, then they're blends of different distillery products. Um, Yamazaki is uh, actually, I think it's actually a solo from the Yamazaki stuff, but it's very common to pull in the different types of products, blend them into one thing in Japanese whiskey. So there's this, I, I'm, tr I'm still trying to put a finger on what these sweet elements are. Sherry. But I'm finding, mm, but I'm finding earthiness, I'm finding some wood spice in there. Not tannic, not no. tannin wood spice. Uh, I'm finding vanilla wood mixed with a little bit of a f dark fruit. Yeah, dark fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This and is then, just li so like actually, a, and then like a like a condensed dark honey note. Now here's the thing. Even though maybe even though the genius of Masataka started Yamazaki, Shinjiro saved it hmm. for the mass for, as a businessman. Forget about the taste of the product and the quality. The business. As a businessman, what happened was Masataka. In Scotland, trained at Longmorn. Yeah. Right? And he trained at Springbank. Mm -hmm. Actually, he trained at Hazelburn, but was bought by Springbank, right? Mm -hmm. So he was trained in this history uh, in Campbelltown of heavily peated, briny, rich malts, right? Mm -hmm. So when he came back to Japan, he was like, I want to make Scottish style whiskey. And so they're doing peated and rich. And so the first whiskey they release mm -hmm. bombs. Because hmm. Japan, the Japanese, they did not like it. Right. At all. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so. Masataka is like, no, I'm doing art, and J all of Japan is like, don't, we don't like don't your art. like it, <laughs> right? Your art is and not good art. So Shinjiro says, no, we need a lighter whiskey right. for the more subtle Japanese palate. So subtle, yeah, like right, like sake and sushi, yeah, right. These Subtlety are all and about nuance. these are all about like the, the complementing, you know, with precision. Yes, and um, apparently whiskey was too heavy handed. Right. Okay. And so the, they changed the recipes and the blends and the makes to be more nuanced and subtle and balanced, and that's the heritage of Yamazaki and the Suntory brands. I wonder what right. he originally cranked out there. That was I know. so. That was so. I wonder how aggressive it was. Dude went straight for a log. But you know what? He went straight. You know he went for. He went for a log. He, yeah. he, he was like a smoke peaty head, and he's yeah. like, "All right, here we go." All right, do. everybody. Here, have, all, some, have all, some Lafroy. All these poor Japanese guys. <laughs> they put down their sake and then just get their ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to move from this to what happened when Masataka decided, I've had enough. I'm going to make what I want to make. Right. You ready? Yes. Masataka Takatsuru comes to make whiskey as an artist, mm -hmm. says, here's what I made. And the whole country goes, fuck you. <laughs> and, and Shinjiro says, we're going to change it up a bit. Right. This, this is actual quotes from transcripts that, uh, from that era. You bro, yeah, Shinjiro. <laughs> We're gonna change it up a bit. 
<laughs> Word. <laughs> yeah. And she said y'all. Yeah, so if you think about it, imagine an artist being told, look, you have to paint like this using these brushes and using this palette because this is what the people want. Yeah. And the, the artist's soul recoils, right? Yeah. It's the conflict, it's the age old conflict between artist and merchant. Yes. Right? Yes. Art and commerce. Yes. Right? Yeah. Shinjiro falls down on the side of let's make money and it's gonna, we'll figure it out. Then we can uh, indulge art. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, um,. It's, it, hard, it's hard to make art when you're when you're broke when you're starving. Masataka says, "Okay, uh, I'll stick around." He stuck around for a decade mm -hmm. and f created the entire portfolio and built this entire program. And then he finally goes, "You know what? I've, I've had enough. I'm going to go make what I wanted to make." He leaves the company. He moves to the northernmost area of Japan into Yoichi. Yeah, and he opens the Yoichi Distillery. And Nika brand comes from this Yoichi is at a similar weather condition to Scotland. It is chosen as a location for similar reasons to Scottish distilleries choosing locations. Yeah. It's surrounded by an amazing water source, uh, good farm and grain access, right? Yeah. And easy access to uh, train, rail, and ships. Yeah, yeah. And so you've got good access to deliver your products to the rest of the world. Yeah. And this is a peated malt whiskey. Oh, so I was getting... Oh, man. He returns to his roots with Yoichi. So, the malt is very present. A very saturated, sweet, malty just core to this whiskey. But beyond that... So this happened, in, by the way, this happened in 1934. Oh, wow. Right? Now what's happening around that same time? Probably wars. Yes. That's what happens. And so it sort of shuts down the ability of Japan to reach the rest of the world for a whole decade mm -hmm. during the time in which Masataka is trying to create the, the thing that he set out to do, right? And uh, so he starts a company that I will not even try to pronounce correctly, but it's a uh, Dain Punk Punk Punkaju? Dain, Dain Punkaju. You're trying. I'm guessing. You're trying. Which uh, later changed his name to Nika, thank God. <laughs> so, and then in the Nika, he established the Yoichi Distillery. It's an oily peat. And the nose, something else crept out from behind there. Yeah. But I would, you would buy that this was an island peaty whiskey mm -hmm. from Scotland all day long. It's flowers. Yes. Oh, I was about to say floral notes. On yeah. top, like over this peatiness. Which is not normal in a briny peaty it's not. whiskey. There's these floral notes that are two in a row. Really pretty beautiful. Two in a row where you find the peat, the heavier notes, uh, and then they the, it happened, the, the acclimation happened, happened much more quickly in this. I found the floral note on like this third sip and then yeah. like getting punched in the damn mouth with flowers. But uh, keep in mind, it still has those deep phenol slight rubber notes that Springbank has. It does, but in the, the first approach, those are hiding the sweeter elements. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that grabs you. And then they but, subside. But, and, and again, it's strange because I'm not acclimating to the sweetness in this. I'm I would argue to yeah, the heavier notes. I agree. I would argue that this is every bit as subtle as Yamazaki, but in a different category. Mm. It is complex, nuanced, with things you have to search for and things that jump out at you only over time. Yeah, that's um, a 45% on the Nika and a 43% on the Yamazaki. Now, did you know that Masataka lived a Nicholas Spark novel? <laughs> did he? <laughs> he, so, he moves ask, to Scotland. Ask, ask your wife. Yeah, ask your wife. <laughs> he moves to Scotland, just think notebook. <laughs> and the the male figure of romance for our era that no male will ever be able to achieve with Ryan Gosling <laughs> writing daily love notes while building a house of their dreams right. alone I'm, in the swamps. So I'm, I'm going to put this out there. <laughs> My wife, when it was her turn to choose the movie, she chose the notebook. Of course. Allegedly, I may have cried just a little bit. It's heartbreaking. And her mom's a bitch. And then my wife looks at me, and of course she's like into it. She's like, It's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh! She's really into it, crying. Ugh. She looks over and she's like, You little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the thing is he moves to Scotland and uh, enrolls in the Glasgow, University of Glasgow. Yeah. And, um, and then starts apprenticing in distilleries, mm -hmm. right? He's staying with a family, a Scottish family, sort of like the foreign exchange student program, right? Falls in love with the daughter mm. of the family. Yeah. And against the will of both families, not just theirs, 
against the will of the Scottish family and his family back in Japan, they fall letters. in love and get married. <laughs> and then, I actually, if you look at early photos of Masataka, he actually looks very Western. Like he's adopted Western hairstyle, yeah. and he's you know he he looks very Western, and he marries her, and then they end up moving he they move back to Japan and they never leave Japan. Yeah. So she ends up leaving her Scottish family and moving to Japan to the northernmost island for the rest of her yeah. life. And now I'm finally finally getting this. Uh, it's like plants mixed with vanilla on the nose. Yeah, and it's like you're you get all the mulchy. Yeah. Like you're planting things yeah, yeah. in a in like a uh, like a greenhouse. Damn, damn, that that I think is it's glorious. A, a quintessential example of a whiskey that every time you approach it, it's changing it up. Yeah, it's a different animal. You're finding something new. That's great. Now, so here's the thing: is was uh, this your final day? Tomorrow is donation day. So much illegitimacy. Tomorrow's donation day. I think you need it. And we're just gonna do donations like a typical donation day, Wait. and then we start dry week. Okay. So, wait, is it but, the 29th tomorrow? Yeah. So we're releasing before noon, so we're good. Yeah. We recorded it before the thing. Yeah. So yeah. chill, well, chill out. Report before dry week. So, so there's so many directions I could have gone in the history of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And I chose these uh, because I wanted to. <laughs> but um, it's been fun. Come on. You've got to drink a lot of really great the whiskey. The day is that you poured many examples. And the stories were actually pretty good. You even, maybe even unwillingly, know more about whiskey than you want to admit now. I think you would be surprised how little <laughs> I know. <laughs> Masataka Katatsuru. Daniel Month is... Takatsuru. Taka. Masataka. 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 Masataka Takatsuru. Takatsuru. Daniel Month Learning. is complete. All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.